Hi, my name is Kent Lee and I teach computer science at Luther College. In this video I'm going to show you a little bit about programming using uh, modules that other people have written. In particular we're going to look at the Turtle Graphics module and uh, get a little more familiar with that and we're going to uh, we're going to understand how to create an object and how to call what's an accessor method on an object, a mutator method on an object, uh, so that we can do something with with uh, turtle graphics. So in, in uh, Python it is nice that we have access to what are called libraries or modules that other people have written because we can do things that are interesting that we wouldn't be able to do if we had to write everything from scratch. And in particular we're going to, in this example, we're going to be looking at turtle graphics which went along with Logo a long time ago, a, another programming language, but it, it was so popular that it's been ported to lots of other languages as well, including, including Python. Um, Turtle Graphics comes along with Python. So um, to use Turtle Graphics we have to import the module and to do that we say import Turtle and that goes ahead and imports the Turtle Graphics module in Python. What happens when Python executes a line like this is it goes out and it looks for a file called turtle.py to import and uh, it looks first in the current directory wherever this uh, program is saved and if it doesn't find it there then it goes on to look at other system directories and in, in this case turtle is in one of the system directories turtle.py is. Now um, we do not do not then want to name our program turtle.py because if we do then Python is going to find turtle graphics in our current directory which is certainly not what we want to have happen. So we're going to import turtle graphics from uh, Python and then once we've done that we can go ahead and create a turtle and we do that by writing t equals uh, and then we have to specify the module name turtle dot and then we have to specify the name of a class or a type within that module and in this case um, the turtle type is called turtle with a capital T. This is no different than saying something like x equals int of, uh, of 6 for example. Um, here I am constructing an integer by taking the value that's in that string and getting the int out of it. Um, and here I am constructing a turtle by saying the type of the turtle type and a left parent and a right parent. It just so happens I don't have to pass anything inside of the parentheses for creating a turtle. So we don't need that x equals int of 6 there. Um, but we do need this and that is called calling a constructor. So here we are calling, um, calling the turtle constructor. to create a turtle object. Okay, So t is pointing now at a turtle object and we can tell that object to do things and or we can get information from that object. Now what kinds of things could we get from it? What could we tell it to do? Well the only way to know that is to look at documentation and what I have done is I've gone out and, and loaded up a uh, um, the documentation for turtle graphics for Python 3. I am going to show you how I found that. Um, the way I found it was to search online for Python, in this case turtle. I happen to know that turtle graphics is part of Python and up pops this first link here. Now this says version 2.7.2 .2. I use version 3 of Python and version 3 and version 2 are very different so we don't want to look at the version 2 documentation. But nevertheless, I'll click on it here to get me into it. And if I go back to the version 2 documentation, I see that there is version 3 documentation out here as well. I'll go to the version 3, and then I'll just search for turtle in here, and up pops the turtle module in Python. And then there's all kinds of documentation in here that I could go ahead and, and read through and, and examples that will tell me for instance, how to move forward. So here's an example of telling a turtle to move forward here. You could also um, can also look uh, at the Python documentation for turtle. It's not quite as pretty to look at, 
but if I get into the uh, if I get into the Python interpreter, I could go ahead and say help turtle, and it brings up a whole bunch of documentation, basically everything you see on the web for uh, turtles as well. So it's all printed here, not quite as pretty as it is online. And finally, the other place you could look is in my text uh, on introductory programming in Python. Um, if you look in one of the appendices, the uh, turtle graphics documentation is in the appendix there as well. So that would be another place to look. Nevertheless, I know that uh, to create a turtle, I call the turtle uh, constructor here to create a turtle object. Once I have a turtle object, then if I run this program, we'll take a look at it here real quick to see what it does. I'll go ahead and save it. I'm going to put it on my desktop, and actually I'm going to call it star.py. And you saw real briefly there, if I run it again, you see real briefly pops up Turtle Graphics window on the screen there. Um, and it goes away right away because the program finishes. And I want to keep the Turtle Graphics window up on the screen even when the program finishes. So I'm going to call a method to get some information to get the screen object from the turtle. To do that, I'm going to write screen equals t.getScreen. So this is an example of what's called an accessor method. Um, get screen is an accessor method on turtle objects. In particular, um, for this turtle object that T is pointing at, I'm going to call get screen to get the screen information from that turtle. And I want to do that because I want to go ahead and write this method call. I want to write screen.exit on click. So this screen.exit on click will cause my turtle graphics window to pop up and remain up until I click in the window. And that's nice so that I can see what my turtle graphics program did. So for, for purposes of a demonstration here, I'm going to go ahead and write a program that uh, draws a five uh, pointed um, uh, star on the screen and I could go ahead and uh, and write out the commands to do this if I wanted to. Um, it wouldn't take me very long here. I could say t.forward and I can find that forward is a method that I can call here on turtles. Um, if I scrolled through here and looked there's the forward method and it tells me a little bit about forward and how to go ahead and use it. I'm going to go ahead and tell it to go forward 200 and I looked online to find a little bit about drawing stars and it turns out that the interior angles are uh, for a five-pointed star are 180 divided by 5 or 36 degrees. I'm going to go ahead and, and tell it to turn left for the outer angle so that's 180 minus 36 or uh, 144 um, so I'm going to say t.left 144 degrees and left is another method. These two methods here are called mutator methods. And uh, mutator methods change the object. In this case, the object being T, the turtle. So mutator methods change. Accessor methods access information about the object. And I'm actually going to repeat these two lines uh, five times. Let's go ahead and copy them. And then I'll paste them in here two, three, four, five, and looks like it didn't quite format it the way I want. Let's go ahead and run it. And so there's one, two, three, four, five points to this star that I just drew on the screen. Now in the last uh, videos we learned about loops and we learned that we can use loops if we have to repeat code. I want to repeat this five times so I'm going to say for i in range um, five, and I'm going to tell it to repeat these two lines along with that comment. I'll throw out these and I can go ahead and run this again. And there we go, we have a five pointed star and I got that by running um, this code that loops five times. I can actually watch this code execute if I would like to and this can be really useful so you can see exactly what's happening in your program. I'm going to do that here and step into it and watch 
and see that I am the first line that I'm doing is importing the turtle code. So that actually executes, and once it's done, I can go on then to create a turtle object. So I'll go ahead and create the object, and there it's created. If I come down here to stack data and look in the stack data, I can see there's T, and sure enough, it's a turtle object. And if I open up T here, I can take a look inside of it. And you can see there's all kinds of information about a turtle. Look at all that information in there. In particular, I can see where its location is on the screen, um, somewhere in here anyway, uh, is a location. And um, I'm not exactly sure where that location is at at the moment. Um, but I could go ahead and alter that location by calling the uh, forward method. And so that's going to happen here in just a moment. So we can step over it. And if we step over, we can watch this thing execute. If I hold the cursor above a variable, I can see what it's equal to. In this case, i is 0 the first time through. And I don't use i in here, so I don't really need to, to be too concerned about it. But i is 0, and it goes from 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So i will be 0 the first time, and I will tell it to go forward 200, uh, the turtle. So I can do step over, tell it to go forward. And if I shrink my window down here so that I can see both at the same time, here's my uh, turtle graphics program, and I just went forward. So I can actually watch it execute here as I go along. So I'm going to turn left here in just a second, and there you just saw the turtle turn left. And now I'm going to come back around, execute that 4 again, and now I is going to be 1. There it is. And by the way, you can see it down here as well. There's I. And, uh, and I'll tell it to keep going here, and I can just watch it as it goes. So as I move through here, I can watch each statement and see what each statement does, um, both on the screen here and in the stack data and up here in the program as well. Um, the last time through, I'm going to go ahead and fall out of that for loop. So I come back up. I'm all done with that for loop. I come down to exit on click. Now I'm waiting for a click to happen. I can go ahead and click in the window, and it closes. And the program is done. So again, we've seen here how to go ahead and create a, uh, um, a tur uh, turtle graphics program. We did that by importing a module. That import is necessary to get the code to uh, to be there in the program. So this is my import statement at the top. Um, imports generally come at the top of your program. And then I created a turtle object by calling a constructor. And I got some information from the object by calling an accessor method. And I caused the object to change by calling a couple mutator methods on it. Um, and uh, that's what I want you to learn for this time, and uh, you should try that out. Try practicing with uh, creating a turtle and uh, making it draw something yourself.